so maybe we'll just uh, we'll go through and we will uh, casually discuss <laughs> our seven beloved artists. Yeah. Maybe we can start with Takashi's work in the front, the mm -hmm. sculptural piece. This was an incredible thing that he presented us with, um, where it takes those elements of what we perceive as traditional craft of woodwork uh, and the elements that you see within his embroidery, this sort of abstracted, beautiful organic shapes, and turns that into this completely wonderful, imaginative, new thing. And it's incredible. And every time that I look at that piece, I notice something different. Take a few looks at what you're seeing. Try and figure out what it is that you're apprehending, which yeah. I think is actually a pretty good segue into, into the series. Yes. And a lot of people uh, don't realize that it's made out of paper. They think that it's made out of wood, that it is, is woodworking. And that is very detail oriented too. So that's one of the pieces. Okay, Susie's second piece uh, is the weaving, that it is a weaving of tape. I think these two pieces in tandem, the hands and the weaving piece, uh, are so intriguing. Maybe we'll, we'll take a look at Christine Nelson's work. I'm tickled that we have string art in the show. String art just seems like. Um, there's so many elements of craft, and I think we tried to think about it from all these different directions. Um, this particular pinup girl, though, she's not just any pinup girl, she's the sunshine girl. Uh, and she's the sunshine girl from the very day that Kristen did the install of this work. And, mm -hmm. But I've been thinking about it as well, that these are the real women who really exist. They're composed of all these different strands, all these different strings. I think moving from Kristen's to uh, Chantal Miro's work is is a good place to go because Chantal also works uh, with yarn and, and knitting a lot actually and sewing. I guess it, it speaks to a common theme in in the show and in contemporary craft as well is is uh, repetition and and work or labor, the use of hands. Uh, and some of her work I think speaks about the frivolity of that, especially Clean House, where she is um, in one half of the screen cutting a piece of fabric and the other half of the screen she's sewing it together. And while she's doing that, she's speaking about the repetition. Mm -hmm. and I, we both found it so interesting that uh, he was this young artist in Winnipeg working on craft, but not focusing on the materiality, but focusing on the performance aspects and mm -hmm. uh, incorporating it into video, and it seemed like a very key component that we wanted in the show. Definitely, yeah, and, and a lot of her work comes out of personal history, which we thought was was really lovely, and she seemed to be really pushing that. And we have her uh, positioned fairly close to Heather Comis, who's another young emerging artist in the show, and uh, I think she provides kind of a, an intriguing and surprising element to She's incorporating fairly straightforward, basic, crafting techniques of embroidery, paper making, but she's also got dried squid in it. She has for quite a while made homemade paper, which is what you see on the wall. Um, she incorporates into that uh, seeds, found plastics, hair, horse hair. Uh, there's some little bubbles we see on there, which she makes out of pig intestine. Mm -hmm. And then for this show, she started focusing on the jellyfish that had been found uh, in eastern Manitoba recently uh, that had originally come from the Yangtze River in China. And she's, she's kind of a mad scientist is often how we think yes. of her. She's not here, so we can call her that. Right over here in the middle, a series of works by Jenny O'Keefe, Jenny O. She was working on this series, Arctic Delirium. Mm -hmm. and and I'm included in a larger piece of hers, which is something that's newer to her practice, which we were really excited about. Um, this sort of format of doll, she has been doing for a little while and has shown before, but she hasn't really shown the larger uh, sculptural pieces before. And we thought that it was a, a great addition. Also appreciated the role that um, these dolls represent in creation of textile mm -hmm. as well as ceramics, which yeah. were two elements that we were interested in including because of course I think those are those are quite large in our management. 
community. Yeah. They, they capture your imagination and they draw you in. And people try assigning their own personalities or their friends' personalities. From our mad scientist, we can move over to our mad mathematician. <laughs> so Jeanette John's work is over here on the wall. So it's it's based on, and I'm totally going to get this a little wrong, so if this is of interest, find Jeanette. Uh, but there are mathematical equations that make up um, different patterns. So paper marbling is also in there. So work is made of uh, paper that has been paper marbled and screen printed. So she came to the paper marbling, uh, revisited it, I guess, as an adult, but she had originally done it as a child with her mother, as a, as a childhood craft. Uh, and then she added to it all this great research about math and beauty and, um, and notions of, of beauty and representations. And she combined them to make these amazingly intricate, detailed, uh, captivating works. So I hope you've had fun listening to us a bit of an overview of the exhibition, a few of our thoughts, if we've been able to communicate some of that.